I'd like to speak to you about how you can build strength and confidence in the Lord. You can always stand strong on God's promises. And I say this because in life, there will come a time when you will encounter deep waters in life. Storms will come, the wind will blow and disrupt things, the rain will fall. But if you stand on God's word, if you stand on his promises, you are standing on firm ground. God's word and his promises should be our foundation. So whatever comes against you, the foundation that is the word of God will shelter you. Chaos may be around you, but the promises of God will be your refuge. The waters may rise. Your life may be shaken. That is a reality for all of us. But let me tell you this. There is a place to run to. There is a place to stand. And there is a foundation that is sure. And that foundation is the Word of God. There are no limits to the power of God and His promises to His children. Deuteronomy 11 verse 18 says, You shall therefore lay upon these words of mine in your heart and in your soul, and you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You cannot know the promises that God has made to you if you do not read his word. You need to know Matthew 11, 28, which says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. That's a promise. If you're tired, Jesus Christ offers you rest. If you're being weighed down by your burdens, Jesus Christ offers you rest. This is a promise that we should know during those times when life seems to be overwhelming. Now Isaiah 40 verse 29 says, He gives power to the weak, and to those who have no might, He increases strength. That's a promise. John 14, 27, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled, and do not be afraid. That is a promise. There's no way you can know the Word of God and know the promises of God and not be filled with strength and confidence. If you need protection, there's a promise for that in God's Word. If you need peace, there's a promise for that. If you're fighting with anxiety, if you're feeling lonely, there is a promise that addresses that in the Bible. And so you may be there right now, facing a challenge, facing a tough situation. I encourage you to declare the word of God and stand on the Lord's promises. I am more than a conqueror through him who loves me. Now please understand that the devil will do everything he can to distract you and to sway you from focusing on the promises of God. So be aware of the enemy and his schemes. He will attack you with doubts. He will attack you with feelings of condemnation, guilt, and shame. But whenever you hear the devil whispers, when he tries to tell you that you will never be forgiven for what you've done, when he whispers and tells you that you'll never be able to move on from your past, or if he tries to tell you that you are unloved or unwanted, I want you to remember this promise in Romans chapter 8, verse 38 to 39. The Bible says, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So don't ever be insecure about your identity. Don't ever be unsure of where you stand with God. The Bible says nothing is able to separate us from the love of the Lord. So when problems arise, when battles are before us, when we experience spiritual warfare, the Word of God has to be the source of constant reassurance to us. It must be that which ignites the fire in our faith. It must kickstart your hope so that regardless of what you're facing, despite the size of the enemy, despite whatever is taking place in our lives, we have a divine and heavenly insurance policy, which is the Word of God. 
We're backed by angelic forces that come to our aid when we shout the name of Jesus in desperate need of help. We have security in our Father's faithfulness. He has never lost a battle. He has never been defeated, nor can he ever be defeated. So stand on God's promises, woman of God. Stand and believe in God's promises, man of God. The battle is not yours, but it is the Lord's. This fight before you is one that you should fight on your knees. This fight before you is not one that you should fight with your own strength, but it's one that you should be fighting with God's word. The key to winning the fight before you, the key is in the word of God. So when you find yourself in a battle, I encourage you not to entertain the devil's attacks. Don't tolerate them. We have powerful promises that we can stand on God's word. We have the victory in the name of Jesus. We have victory, and so we should declare and speak with authority God's word. How do you call yourself Christian, but the way you live is anything but Christ-like? Come out from among them, the Bible says. Be ye separate, touch not the unclean, says the Lord. This topic of self-evaluation, self-examination, and the judgment of self is hugely important if we are to become Christians who are living a life pleasing to the Lord. So allow me to ask, if the angels were commanded by God to bring you before Him, if they were to open up the chambers of your heart, if the books were open to detail your every thought, deed, and intentions, what would be found? Who would be seen occupying the throne of your heart? Would the Word of God be written on every side, on every corner, and in every place in your heart? Or would we find something else? Would we find that you are filled with the Holy Spirit? Or would we find that you are filled with the lust of money, the lust of pleasure, and the flesh? What I'm trying to get at is, examine yourself on a regular basis. Hold yourself against the standard that is in the Word of God. We're all good at following the commandments that say, do not kill, do not steal. But how many of us have idols in our hearts? Part of the reason why 1 Corinthians 11 verse 31 is so powerful to me is because if we follow it, if we are obedient to this verse, then we will not be hypocrites. We won't be shallow Christians. We will not be a people who say one thing, but live in a completely different way. And there's a lot of that going on today with modern preachers in a lot of mainstream churches. Let me ask you a question. And it might make some of you uncomfortable, but I believe it's important every now and again to examine ourselves. Examine what you tolerate in your life. Examine who you associate with and what they are feeding you. It's important to examine yourself against the standard of God and His Word. 